irritable bowel syndrome or IBS as an abbreviation is the topic for this video. Irritable bowel syndrome is essentially a medical condition that involves abdominal pain and it alternates between diarrhea and constipation. And irritable bowel syndrome is essentially a diagnosis of exclusion and what that means is that this will be given to the patient as a diagnosis after many other medical conditions are ruled out through testing. The etiology or cause of IBS can be broken up into psychosocial and physiological factors. Psychosocial includes anxiety, depression, and a history of sexual or physical abuse. Physiological factors include altered motility, in particular of course of the intestinal tract, something called visceral hyperalgesia. And this term means a heightened perception of pain. Another physiological factor that can cause IBS is colonic transit being either slow or fast. If it's slow, that will lead to constipation, and if it's fast, it will lead to diarrhea. Let's discuss the symptoms now. IBS usually presents in a person's teenage years or in their 20s, and it can be triggered by certain foods or stress. And the main issues involved are abdominal pain or discomfort, constipation, and diarrhea. And also abdominal bloating is another common symptom. And there is a very specific criteria that is used to diagnose IBS, and it is known as the Rome criteria. So here is that Rome criteria, and it involves the following. Recurrent abdominal pain, on average at least one day per week in the last three months, associated with two or more of the following criteria. Relation to defecation, associated with a change in frequency of the stool, either more often as in diarrhea or less often as in constipation, and associated with a change in form or appearance of the stool. And this criteria needs to be fulfilled for the last three months with symptom onset at least six months before diagnosis. Treatment of IBS involves patient education, letting the patient know about this medical condition with a brochure or a pamphlet is very helpful. Diet modification can help especially if certain foods have been identified as triggers. Interestingly, fiber does not help much in IBS. So now let's get into the medications. The first type of medication that's commonly used is something called an antispasmodic. And the two most common are dicyclamine and hyoscyamine. The following medications involve IBS, but in particular, if it is IBS constipation predominant or diarrhea predominant. If it's constipation predominant, the medication of choice is lubiprostone. And diarrhea predominant, the two medications most commonly used are diphenoxylate and a very popular medication known as loperamide. Two more remedies I would like to share that are important. Peppermint oil has been shown to be beneficial in patients with IBS because it relaxes the smooth muscle of the intestine. And this can help relieve pain 
and cramping. The next category of medications that can be tried if the previous medications have not worked is a group of medications known as TCAs, which stands for tricyclic antidepressants. And examples of those are desipramine, nortriptyline, and amitriptyline. So now let's take a look at a few clinical vignettes. A 40-year-old businessman has recently been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome after extensive testing by his gastroenterologist. His predominant symptoms are diarrhea and pain. Which one of the following has been shown to be helpful in controlled trials? As I mentioned uh, in the video, that daily use of peppermint oil has been shown to relieve symptoms in patients with IBS because it relaxes the smooth muscle and can help relieve pain and cramping. A 22-year-old college student comes to your office to discuss her several year history of abdominal pain and constipation. It has gotten worse since she returned to school this fall. She describes crampy pain and bloating that eases after defecation. Her bowel movements are firm and difficult to pass and occur about every three days on average. Her symptoms have not included vomiting, weight loss, blood in the stool, or melina. Her menses are regular and she is an otherwise healthy young woman. Her family history is negative for any GI or GU diseases. On exam, you find her abdomen to be soft and without masses with no tenderness to palpation. Which one of the following would be most appropriate at this time. So let's go through these answer choices. Fiber, interestingly, does not help much with IBS. Lubiprostone is definitely the drug of choice for constipation predominant IBS, which is what she has. So let's keep that one. Choices C, D, and E are actually imaging studies and they're costly and if you look here, her symptoms have not included any vomiting or weight loss or blood or melina, and her physical exam was unremarkable. So at this time, a trial of lubiprostone would be most appropriate. A 34-year-old female with ongoing untreated depression consults you for newly diagnosed diarrhea-predominant irritable bowel syndrome. She presents with worsening abdominal discomfort. Her abdominal discomfort is not severe but it is constant. She has tried dicyclamine without relief and is interested in trying a different approach. The patient has had negative testing for inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease along with normal blood tests. She asks about specific dietary modifications or medications that may be helpful for her abdominal discomfort. Which one of the following interventions would you recommend? The first choice is a tricyclic antidepressant that is used to treat IBS. Now, if you notice in the vignette, she also suffers from depression. So this would probably be the most appropriate choice. But let's go through the other ones. Hyoscyamine is one of those antispasmodic drugs, and she has already been on one called dicyclamine. So since she has not had any relief with one antispasmodic drug, starting her on another one probably is not the best choice. Lubiprostone is definitely a great medication, but it's for constipation predominant IBS. And the last one, which is fiber, has not been beneficial in the treatment of irritable bowel syndrome. So the answer for this question is A.